Hi cats and kittens, it's Amy from Savor Salvage Scent. I hope you're doing great. Um, to those of you who are new to the channel, this mostly focuses on um, all things perfume related with an occasional other DIY or creative project. To those of you who are new, if you enjoy this content at all, I hope that you will give um, the video a thumbs up, anyone and uh, consider clicking the red subscribe button so we can stay in touch. Uh, I welcome thoughts, ideas, questions, challenges. On the note of challenges, today I am part of a collaboration with my friend, um, Average Autumn. For those of you who are not familiar with her, she is, this is my narrative, she might call herself something different. Um, she focuses mostly on um, beauty, lifestyle, health, and part of that sometimes is her fragrance obsession. So she kindly reached out to me um, probably a few months ago with this great idea to basically do um, a blind <laughs> sniff test or exchange. We're calling it the, she's calling it the um, mystery perfume challenge through which we would swap perfume. So if it's okay with you, I'm going to read from notes a little bit, which is um, rare for me, but I want to make sure I'm not, I, I sometimes like to break rules. So I want to make sure I follow the rules and tell you everything about this challenge. Um, but essentially it's us uh, guessing at different scents. So um, you might ask, what is the mystery perfume challenge? So again, Autumn suggested that we swap fragrances. She's a maniac, so she sent me 14. So then I am also pathological, so I sent her back 14. Um, these are unnamed decants, um, and she and I have kind of briefly tested them over the last few weeks. Um, and we are also going to spray them again today for you and talk about what we think they might be, whether it be us guessing at notes, trying to describe them, even maybe guessing at the perfume or the house. And then we're going to open up the envelope that tells us what they are. Um, so, uh, I also ranked mine with a key that includes, um, feelings that range from hate, not for me. A good reference to keep on hand, perhaps not something I would wear all the time, but a good reference. Um, I like it and find it interesting. I love it and I'm obsessed. So um, I loved the idea of doing this experiment um, partly because I had this really interesting experience when I went to the Guerlain flagship store a couple years ago. And for those of you who haven't been there in their Paris store, they have this really cool section. It's so beautiful where they have all these bottles set up. They're beautiful, glowing, different colored bee bottles. And then they have the tops from them. They're not marked what the bottles or the tops are. They have a ribbon with a number. So you smell the top, the glass top, and it allows you to experience the scent without any preconceived notions, which I found really um, freeing and it allowed me in a different way to form my own opinions and then you could look up what you were smelling to see what it was and I just thought that was such a cool process and this has been a really cool process for me too with her sense I'll say she and I well we have some similarities we definitely have some big differences and this was really fun for me because I frankly think it um, pushed me in a healthy way to try things I might not have otherwise and yeah I just think hilarity is one too okay so it's important that I point out two rules that we used while doing this. We purposely did not send each other all scents that we thought one another would love. While there are likely some of those in here, um, that's not what we are going for. We are definitely going for like a diversity of experience. Second rule that I really want everybody to listen to, scent is subjective. So something I love, you might scrub off and hate. Something you love might not be my cup of tea. Um, and same goes with Autumn and me. Like some of the things that she sent, I might not like. I don't know that she's even going for that. It's really about experience and finding our true loves or scents. Um, and so, you know, again, we have some similarities, we have some differences. So I'm expecting us to both soothe and insult each other. Let's go. So, all right, let's dive in. I'm diving in. I have this little um, beautiful vintage tin 
that my friends Sarah and David gave to me. Um, Bluebird chocolate toffee. How cute is that? And I have all the envelopes in here. Um, Autumn sent me an envelope taped with a decant and then I made my notes. And so I'm going to start to open them and tell you what I'm experiencing. So I also sprayed these on the envelope today so that I would remember what I'm smelling. But number one, <laughs> this is so fun right out of the gate. This is strong as hell. Um, I wrote, it reminds me, I I would even, if somebody said you have to bet your life on this, I would guess this is Lulu by Casherelle. I, is, is it Lulu by Casherelle? Anyway, um, it is um, strong as can be. Right out of the gate, I get just a huge amount of, to me, it's either like, it's got to be either tuberose gardenia or tiare flower, maybe all three, I don't know. It also reminds me a little of Serge Luton's, um, uh, both um, kind of an intersection between Datura Noir and um, Tuberos Criminal. Um, but it smells most like Lulu to me. It's um, really strong, almost resinous at times, but I think it's just how strong it is. Um, this is a beast it performed all day. So I'm going to open this mother and find out what it is. Cannot wait. <laughs> well, no shit. Oh, did I say that? Pardon, pardon me. Um, this is not Lulu. This is called Clark Clockwork by Rhodes. 2014. Notes. Top. Nutmeg. Black pepper. Ground lemon bergamot peel. Mid. Cedarwood. Fir balsam. Base, violet leaves, vanilla, amber, vetimer, oak moss. So far, I'm really wrong. <laughs> I don't know where I get tuberose. Oh my God, that's all I get when I smell it. What could it be? God, I can't believe those things made me feel that way. Anyways, it's really strong. It is, when you spray this perfume, I don't know if you can see it, it is blood red. Like, don't spray this on a... Uh, white shirt um she says when this scent first came out it was red the new one clear not sure what they changed why they should change the color of the juice this is really interesting and i'm telling you friend autumn it says this is 115 dollars. you i bet you any money knowing the things you like if you like the scent you are already turning your nose up at lulu and i'm telling you lulu smells exactly like this and it's 25 dollars and it's vintage. Um, really cool, really strong. Um, this leans, uh, it's interesting, it's it's billed as unisex. Um, and yeah, I, I would think, again, I'm for like anybody wear whatever you like, and I I've definitely feel this is unisex for sure. All right, so number one, that was fun. Totally my guess was way off. Where do I get tuberose? God, I would love to know that. Any of you are nervous? Woo, sorry. If any of you are noses or perfumers, if you have any ideas, tell me. Okay, number two. I have to remember what this smells like. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Got it. All right. Number two. Um, I said, I love this. It smells like herbal spiced pineapple pop at first. It dries down more powdery and other fruits come out. It lasts. I'm guessing, wild guess, I don't own any scents that smell like this, but I hear a lot of people talking about how Aventus smells like pineapple and all of its clones. So I'm just guessing, this is a not, I, I'm just gonna say, I bet there are a lot of pineapple scents that would be like beachy or or um, really cloyingly sweet. This is really cool, it's herbal. Like I also feel like this could totally be unisex. So I don't own it, I have no idea what it is, but those are my guesses, so here we go into envelope number two. Oh, how cool, I've been dying to try this house. 1804, George Sand by History's Day Parfums, 2001. This runs about $185. Oh gosh, 
This is beautiful, you guys. The notes are Tahitian gardenia, Corsica peach, Hawaiian pineapple. Mid notes, clove, nutmeg, Indian jasmine, lily of the valley, rose of Morocco, base, sandalwood, patchouli, benzoin, vanilla, white musk. And it says, it's inspired by the writer. It's an androgynous scent meant for women. Wow, it's beautiful. I, I would love to hear if any of you have tried this. This is a house um, I've shied away from, frankly, because I'm cheap. Um, I'm trying to change that this year instead of just amassing scents that I'm going to invest more in a few. So this is one I'll buy. It smells, you guys, it smells so beautiful. I'm dying to know what, anyways, Autumn's um, video will tell us what she thinks probably of her own scents too. But I'm dying to know like if she likes this one. My guess is that she does. Anyways, it's beautiful. Love it. Okay, number three. Oh, okay. I, one thing that I'll say about her scents, she's not just following the trends of the day. I'll tell you what, she's an individual and the diversity within what she sent me was incredible. Like, so fun for me. This is interesting. Um, okay, so number three. I wrote, <laughs> wasn't an initial love or comfort scent for me when I first sprayed it. I liked it more as it dried down. Um, to me, I get a freshy from this, like a fresh scent that somehow isn't screechy. Um, I, so we all favor different things, right? Fresh she scents are not something I favor typically. Whatever happened in the 90s and aughts on with American perfumers, such as like, and again, no, no knocks to these perfumers because I love some of their perfumes, but like CK1, CKB, that kind of stuff, the fresh scent, the dryer sheet, Isimiyaki, I could go on. I just hit a, a hit a threshold. And um, so it's rare that I like a fresh scent. This one I, I do like when it dries down. Um, and then I said, as it dries down, it smells a little more like, I can't figure out if it's like wood, paper, iris, like powdery, kind of dusty. We'll see if any of this is right. This is number three, opening. Um, oh, interesting. I haven't tried this either. It says, God, I hope I'm reading this right. North Bondi by, is it pronounced Kwai? Q-U-I-A? I've seen that name. I believe I've seen a few of these on my friend's shelf. The notes are, top notes, Italian lemon, apple blossom, bergamot raspberry. Mid notes, May rose violet jasmine. Base is white musk patchouli and sandalwood. She writes, this house has made matching fragrances that smell exactly like their hair products. Oh, that's so interesting. So yeah, I get why it's a freshie. And I'll tell you what, while I might not like to drown myself in this, I get that like it would smell really nice as a hair product. And I could see where that would grow into perhaps a love for wanting it to be on your body. It's not my lane or my um, first choice, but I think this is really cool and I've wondered about this house, so thank you. Um, very cool. All right, so that was number three. Number four is coming up. <laughs> All right, this is one of the ones I wasn't digging. And again, no harm, no foul if anybody loves this. Um, all right, I'm gonna refresh my memory. Yeah, boy. Okay, I wrote, Number four is a big no for me in my tastes. Smells like rubbing alcohol had an affair with a dryer sheet. Um, I said I bet a lot of people love it. And I say that only, not, I'm not dissing anybody else. I'm an odd duck. I am not everybody's cup of tea, y'all. So I know this, I've lived with it my whole life. You're not going to surprise me if you tell me. Um, my guess is this is like a Calvin Klein scent or a Simiyaki or something like that. It's, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not... Not, not for me. Oh, it's another quiet. That's interesting. They do have similarities. Um, Melrose Place, it's called. Top is champagne, lychee. Wow, I love lychee. Red berries, pink pepper, mid, peony. I hate peony. Did I say that? I like peony in the wild, but not typically in perfumes. Mid, peony, rose, freesia. Also can't stand freesia in perfumes most of the time. Bergamot, jasmine. Base, white musk, cedar, sandalwood, amber. She writes, another scent that matches their hair care project, products. Yeah, it smells like that. Um, thanks for playing. All right. 
I know. Now I know. Not my cup of tea. All right. Number five. Oh, man. This one I love. There's like four or five in here I'm going to have to buy. Damn, you bought them. All right. Um, I know exactly. Yeah, what this smells like. Oh, it's so good to me. Number five. Reminds me of Caron's Eau de Reglisse, which is my favorite scent in the whole wide world. It also reminds me of Clarence Eau, uh, Eau de Dynamison. It might even be one of those. Uh, we're going to find out. Um, when I first opened and sprayed it, it has a bit of a skunkiness. Both of those do too. The first second you spray it, or like an herbalness that almost smells skunky. Um, but then it dries down to this beautiful, like what I smell is this beautiful citrus aromatic, maybe even tea, maybe even anise. But it's to me like a sharper lemony, maybe grapefruit, I don't know, citrus with this kind of, maybe even lemon verbena, but it's got like a tea feel to it. So, Don Pardo, show us what we won. What did we win? It's not one of those two. I thought for sure it was going to be. That's how similar it smells. Jean-Louis Cher? God, so many of these I don't know. Autumn, you are awesome. The nose is, yeah, Jean-Louis Cher. Um, the notes, top notes are green notes, hyacinth, aldehydes. It's aldehydes I smell too. Cassia and violet. Mid notes are orris root, rose, carnation, jasmine, gardenia, and tuberose. The base notes are oak moss, vetiver, civet. I love, I love me some animal stank. Um, cedar, sandalwood, musk, amber, and vanilla. Wow. So no lemon, no, none of those things. Um, what I think I'm getting that scent from is the combination of like hyacinth, aldehydes, and then you've got like violet and orris root that gives it that powdery feel. Um, this is gorgeous. God, I hope it's not expensive. It shouldn't have a price on here. It makes me think it's not being produced anymore. It was first created in 1979. This to me is perfectly unisex too. It smells like Spring tea, beautiful, bright, earthy, yeah. Okay, so that is Jean-Louis Cher. Am I saying that right? That was gorgeous, so much fun. But I honestly probably won't buy it because it smells so similar to uh, Caron's Eau de Reglisse and to um, Dynamison. So, on, onward. Number six. Oh, I really like this one. This is like a really like to a love. Mm. This is a thing where it's like not necessarily my lane, but I like it so much that I might have to broaden my lane. Here's how I feel about it. It's woody, it's incensey, but not heavy. I said it's dry as a bone. It's beautiful. It reminds me of Tom Ford's Sahara Noir, which is a favorite scent of mine and discontinued. Um, my guess is that it's got probably like I don't know, sandalwood, um, maybe um, patchouli, um, what other things are dry in scents? Um, dry, dry, dry. God, I don't know what else. Woody. Yeah, anyways, we're going we're to find out. It's really nice. <clears throat> Hepcat by Fleur. Cool. $96 retail. Nose. I don't know this person, Natalie Benaro. The notes are saffron, black vetiver, oud, and patchouli. Saffron almost has like that paper dry quality at times for me. All these things I love, black vetiver. I didn't think I, I oud challenges me, so I'm excited. I'm going to have to buy this one. Like this is so beautiful. She wrote, on paper, this scent has everything that I would want. However, there is a sharp metallic note that I can't quite place. I don't get that at all. I was just telling Autumn the other day that there are a lot of things that put people off in perfume that I don't even smell. Like they'll be like, oh, that's really skanky. And I'll be like, it smells really nice. Uh, you know, and this is why I say things are subjective. There are things that are really stinky to other people or off-putting, metallic, whatever. Yeah, I love this thing. It smells amazing to me. All right. So that one I think I'm going to have to buy. Thank you very much. All right. Next. We are now at number seven. We're about halfway through the challenge, friends. Um, I wrote, I'm infatuated with this. Right out of the sprayer, I smelled this and I was like, where have you been all my life? This is, I cannot, it's everything I love. I'm like, I, I cannot believe I found this. She sent it to me. Um, all right. So 
I loved this so much. I had to stop the experimentation over the last few weeks and I had to wear this for three days straight. And I was packed off, I couldn't tell what it was. All right, I said, wear this for three days. At first I get perfumery lemon cookie, but other things also come out. I mean, here's the thing. If you, okay, first of all, this lasted on me for like six or eight hours. That's a long time for me. And then I get so many things. I'm guessing this is a major composition because here are all the things that I get. I don't think all these things are probably in here, but this is this, the kind of smell I'm smelling. I get everything from, I smell, I feel like tonka, hay, vetiver, caramel, lavender, um, honey. I, it smells so good and I get this lemony cookie kind of thing but it's not fully a gourmand. Anyways, it is freaking awesome. This is gonna be the first thing I buy. I'm crazy about it. Can't wait to find out what this is. Oh, I've been wanting this and I'm so excited. I love it as much as I do. Oh my gosh, it's Tonka by Commodity. So Autumn just actually sent me my first Commodity and anyways, I'm crazy about that too. So the nose is Help me with the name. I can't even say it. Guillaume Flavigny. Help. It's $185 retail. or no, $135. The notes are almond, cardamom, artemisia. That's probably that part of that. Like I get a little bit of an anise kind of thing too. Middle notes are magnolia and lotus. And the base notes are tonka bean, benzoin, sandalwood, and para balsam. I mean, I seriously love every one of those notes with all my heart. And it's not just Tonka, but man, does the Tonka come through. I bought this incredible Tonka candle like 20 years ago, and the company stopped making it, and all I do is think about it, and this kind of smells like that candle. It just smells like everything I want in a fragrance. She wrote, this is the most powdery scent I've ever smelled. All I smell is powder. <laughs> it just shows you, like, so guess what? Autumn hates powder. Don't hate her. She's, listen, you know. Um... She hates powder, so I guess we can't hang out when I wear this. I don't know what to say. Man, I love it. I can't even tell you how much I love it. Oh, it's so good. It is It is powdery. Feel you. Okay, that was number seven. I was dying to know all week what that was. All right, number eight. I got to kick this into high gear, y'all. I apologize. Um, I wrote, oh, yeah. This is like spring in a bottle. I wrote, this is the brightest fragrance I've ever smelled in my life that isn't just citrus. Is it Narcissus? Is it Lily? Is it Hyacinth? I smell the stems too. So when I first smell it, it is just bright and it's not screechy somehow. I don't understand. It's so bright. It smells literally like you just cut into stems. Um, and then once it softens, it gets powdery. So I'd be surprised if Autumn loved this, but man, was I loved it. <gasps> Oh, how exciting. I love Tokyo Milk and Margot Elena, and this is called Waltz. Wow, this is, you guys, if you need a spring or summer fragrance, the notes are lime blossom, wisteria, honey, tincture of rose, and white musk. Wow. Some of those I don't even really have much experience with, but what comes through to me is just bright, beautiful, springy, fresh, um, optimistic. She wrote, you did a video on your Tokyo Milk scent, so I knew you didn't have this one. It's true, and man, I'm gonna have to get it. I hope they're still making it. It's beautiful. Waltz by um, Margot Elena, Tokyo Milk. All right, number nine. <laughs> this was one that I just like so much I had to take a shower. And when people say, oh, I hated that perfume, it's a scrubber. And I'm always like, oh, that's so dramatic. <laughs> Guess what? This was rough and tough, man. I told her when I sprayed this, it smelled like soap, hairspray, and nail polish. Like, and not good. Like, I'm telling you, you know how strong nail polish remover is? Or sorry, nail polish remover, acetone. And I, this, buddy, I, I sprayed this at like 7.30 in the morning. And by 10, I was like, I have to take another shower. I had to get it off me. I'm sorry, world, if you like the scent. I'm afraid to see what it is. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Not surprised. Oh, God, this is that scent that fragrance nut <laughs> sends with every box, that Simply Bell. <laughs> oh, 
good. The notes are peach, orange, violet leaf, jasmine, lily in the valley, heliotrope, uh, water lily. Water lily can be really strong, not in a good way. Musk, vanilla, benzoin, shura. Ha, ha, ha. This is the blank, I'm not saying the word, perfume I get with every perfume order from Fragrance Net. <laughs> yeah. That is going to the trash. Oh, no. Well, at least, at least this wasn't, I was so afraid it was going to be like a Guerlain or something that I loved and then I would be horrified and embarrassed. Okay. Number 10. Oh, yeah. This is one that's driving me crazy. I think I actually own this scent. And I cannot place it. it. It really always has been driving me crazy. Um, God. And here's the thing. <laughs> I'm going to sound like a jerk, but when I don't maybe love a fragrance, but I don't hate it either, sometimes it just comes off as perfumey. Like dictionary, somebody threw some notes together and said this is a perfume. It's okay. Oh, I just can't figure out what it is. I even wrote, I don't even know anymore because I can't even pull out, I can't pull out notes. It's vanillic, I'm pretty sure. Floralish, it just sounds like, it smells like what everybody and their mama's wearing in a lot of ways. Sorry, I hope that doesn't sound terrible. I don't know, it just smells, I feel like I've smelled it. I'm going to be embarrassed because I bet you any money I'm going to open this and it's going to be like something I own. I'm like, all right, what is this thing? This is, oh, Love by Beauty Pie. Okay. Um, oh, Frank Vocal made it. Well, he's, he's, a, he's a nose I really like too. Beauty Pie, I think, is like a subscription service. I'm going to have to tell me more about it. Um, the notes are Calibrian, Bergamot, Pink Rhubarb, in interesting quince, Mid, Black Orchid, Apricot Nectar, Honeysuckle. Is it Muguet? M-U-G-U-E-T, which I think is like a Narcissus. I'm not sure. Base is golden amber, cedar wood, sandalwood, musk. She wrote, I find this scent cloying. Yeah, I'm with you. I love Santel 33, which is also by Frank Vocal. Yeah, what do you think? And I I just, I'm not, it's not for me. And I'm not dogging it. Like, there's probably a gazillion perfumes that are worse. It's just not me, mine, you know. So, yeah, I'm su kind of surprised you made that, actually. Um, okay, next. Number 11. Oh, yeah, this is interesting, too. This is another one I feel like. If I don't own it, I have something close to it. So here's what I get from it. Number 11. At first I get vanilla and fruit, maybe orange blossom. It reminds me, like, what comes to my mind is Ely Saab or Gaultier. Um, when it dries down, I get a little more rose and soap. Um, to me, this is like a fruity floral. Well, yeah. And it's not, I typically don't love fruity florals, but I kind of like this. It's one that I'm not sure about yet. All right, so what is it? Oh, it's C. Okay. Um, it's C by Giorgio Armani. Uh, no wonder I think I smell it. I've smelled it because just a lot of people wear it. Um, it's it's fine. It's interesting. It has some nice things. I, I think it has to grow on me. This is, uh, the nose is Christine uh, Nagel. The notes are top Sicilian Bergamot, Mandarin, Blackcurrant, Liqueur, Mid, Rose de Ro May Rose. Um, Neroli, Egyptian Jasmine, Freesia. The base notes are patchouli, woods, amber. Cannot read the next one. And vanilla. Fun fact. Every time I wear this fragrance and go through a drive through the workers compliment me. If you're trying to attract a fast food worker, get it. That's cool. Um, it does smell really nice. I can see why somebody would just be like, you smell nice. Um, I've been wanting to try this you know, give it time on my own skin, so I will. And I'm interested in the differences between C and C and Entence too. So anyways, thank you so much for sending this to me. Um, and that that is a hilarious tip. Okay. All right, next. I think we just have a few more. Yeah. Next, number 12. I said, I love this. <sighs> yeah, this is cool. This is one I couldn't wait to find out what it is too. I wrote... Um, at first herbal, aromatic, I'm guessing with anise or lavender, um, as it dries down, it gets a little more sweet and spicy and almost smells like hay to me. And then I just wrote, mm, this is, this is, I'm really into like aromatics, especially if they have something like hay, tonka, um, anise, licorice, 
I don't know. Those are my guesses. Could be wrong. So far, I'm not very right. Ah. Oh, I've been dying to try this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm right about some of this. It's Fun Fair Evening um, by Maison Martin Margiela. Um, it's $130 retail. Noses are Marie, is it Salamine, and Jacques Cavalier? Notes. Top notes are star anise, pear, apple, neroli, pedigrain. Mid notes, orange blossom, tuberose, Moroccan rose, base, caramel, Tahitian vanilla, and broxen white musk. So definitely there are some aromatics and like florals. But also it's so cool that it's mixed with like star anise um, and caramel, you know, vanilla. So it's definitely has like this foody fun fair, like funnel cake feel. It's interesting, but it's also got this herbal thing. She wrote, lots of reviewers say they smell cotton candy. Mm -mm, I don't get that. I mean, I get like some, can maybe a little candy, but I don't, I don't get like pink sugar and that kind of stuff. Um, she said, but this smells like a taffy pooling stand to me. Oh, that's cool. I get more than that. I get herbalness too. The star anise really uh, comes out for me. So I wouldn't call this your average sweet scent. It's it's complex and beautiful. I can't wait to buy this. Fun fair evening by, yeah, you know who. Cool. Man, I've been wanting to try more from them. This is so fun. Okay, two more, y'all. Number 13. Um, I wrote, how can something be dry and fatty and soapy at the same time? This is weird to me, but I like it. Like, do you guys know what I mean by that? Are there weird scents where you're like, that's weird, but you're like, but I need to keep smelling it, and I like it more and more. I don't know. Fatty, soapy, dry. I don't know. Okay, we're going to find out. Oh! <laughs> this is one of my favorite houses, and I've been dying to try this fragrance. And it's got one of the sexiest bottles I've ever seen. But I don't know that I would buy it. That's interesting. It's Louis by Guerlain. Terry Wasser, one of my favorite noses. The notes are clove and pear, benzoin, carnation, leather, vanilla, musk, woods, smoky notes. God, do you like it, Autumn? I'm dying to know. I don't dislike it, but it's strange to me, but I think strange enough that I'm going to have to own it. I like it. I bet you any money it grows on me. Sometimes that's the way Guerlain is for me. Uh, an example would be um, the Blue Hour. What is the name in French? Oh, my brain. Anyways, when I first sprayed it, like for the first year or two I sprayed it, I was like, ooh, weird, I don't know. Now I love it. So what does that say? <laughs> Weirdo, probably. Okay, last. Number 14, I wrote, um, oh yeah, I'm dying to know what this is. I, I get a creamsicle. I get like kind of like a soft orange and maybe a hint of vanilla and strawberry. I wrote, I wish it was stronger, but I like it. So I'm guessing this is kind of like a summer gourmand. I have no idea, y'all. We'll find out. Sean, oh, yeah. I heard that this is like a, um, this is a really good celebrity scent. Um, it's Sean Mendes Signature. It's 40 bucks, and actually I think you get a lot cheaper online. Um, notes are top, lemon, pineapple, Macintosh, apple, mid, frangipani, Sugar, maple, accord, rose, base, wood, wait, white cedar, wood, skin, musk, dolce de leche. So um, it wasn't orange. It's lemon and pineapple that's coming out for me. And then combined with that, like, dolce de leche, even the musk, that you get this creaminess. And Frangipani does that too. And so to me, I get, like, orange kind of creamsicle from this. She wrote, sometimes this smells like a fruit explosion to me. And other times it smells like creamy neroli. Yeah, no, I, I get you. I get I get that too. Neroli um, isn't listed as a note. I know. <laughs> That's so funny sometimes. Um, I was curious to see you um, blindly smell it. It was great. That was a really fun way to um, end the experiment. So, y'all, this has been so fun for me. I would say it takes time, this experiment. But it's really a great way, one, to get to know another um, collector and YouTuber. But it's also just a great way to kind of reinforce the things that you like, um, to get maybe outside of your lane and your box. And I'm so grateful, Autumn, for you, um, just for this exchange and for this opportunity because um, you really got me out of my lane in some ways. And some of these I really love. And I think you've turned me on to a couple of my new favorite scents. So 
Thank you. So, everyone, I would encourage you to do this experiment. You do not have to do 14. Again, we're freaks. Um, you can do five or three or whatever, but hop on board if you'd like, anyone. But I, I'm going to call out a few names specifically of um, YouTubers just that I've been watching a lot lately or love. I love a lot of people, but these are people that I feel like I have some kind of, I've talked to in some kind of way before. So I'm going to call out Eloisa, Paula, Deborah Day, the Fragrance Enabler, Silver Butterfly, Sam from My World of Fragrance, and Lanier Smith, who I don't know, um, but I hope to know. So, y'all... Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you try this. I would love to know your thoughts about any of these scents. And I hope to talk to you again soon. Cheers. Bye.